Welcome all to this 22nd lecture of Principles of Statistics. In the last lecture, we started with um, sampling methods, and today we're going to continue with this uh, sample from general uh, distributions. So we're going to focus on two different um, algorithms, the first one being the so-called um, acceptance or, or accept-reject uh, sampling algorithm. So accept, reject, sampling algorithm. Okay. So we're going to be exactly in the same setting that we were in the last um, algorithm that we introduced. So let capital F be, or, you know, be a distribution or a CDF with a um, PDF, PDF, uh, lowercase f, and assume that we can simulate from, um, you know, from some h. Again, you know, this could be because um, we cannot simulate from f and we can simulate from h, or it could be simply, you know, that it's a lot more costly to do so from, from f rather than h. And, um, but either way, what we assume is that we can simulate from h. And now what we're going to have as a condition this time is that the f can be controlled or is upper bounded by the h times a constant for some constant um, m greater than zero. So then the algorithm goes as follows. So first of all, we sample from this h, so sample x from h, and we're also going to sample a uniform distribution, a uniform random variable. This is a you know, zero, one, so the usual uniform. And then in the second step, we're going to decide whether we accept the, so accept, um, you know, y equal to x, and this is going to depend on whether this uniform is less than or equal to this uh, ratio when evaluated at the capital X, okay? And otherwise, what we do, well, otherwise we just continue or return to the first step until acceptance, yeah? Okay. Okay, so it's very simple, yeah, this um, algorithm. So in the example sheet, what you're going to show um, is that indeed the y will follow this distribution, yeah, it will, um, yeah, follow this distribution. Okay, so let's uh, make a remark. Um, that will allow us to also sort of motivate uh, the next uh, sampling algorithm. So, of course, what we wish is that this uh, ratio is approximately 1. And this is, of course, you know, for, for any x, um, because we don't know what we're going to get for x. Or, in other words, or just equivalently, what we wish to have is that h is approximately um, f over m, yeah? For some um, capital M. And so this in general is actually hard yeah, um, to find. <coughs> so hard to find, especially um, especially in high dimensions or for convoluted um, distributions, right? And which are some convoluted examples that we've seen? Well, um, you know, very uh, standard one are posteriors. Yeah? Based on posteriors. So these are, you know, pretty convoluted and uh, they can be also in high dimensions. And so, you know, this, this 
um, sampling method, um, it's fine, but not for such cases. Yeah. So we're going to, from now on, change notation um, because we really have, you know, this sort of Bayesian uh, world in mind when we're introducing the next algorithm. So change, even though it's applicable to many other settings, yeah. Um, change notation. So we're going to change, you know, from this x, y to actually the thetas that we had in, in the Bayesian world, and then from f, f to uh, mu, yeah, um, and just the usual changes. Okay. So um, the method I'm sort of um, referring to is the so-called Markov chain Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. Yeah. And this will shorten as MCMC, which is just very, very standard um, acronym for it. Okay, so what is the fundamental idea? So the fundamental idea is as follows. Yeah? So we have, uh, we're interested, just to fix notation, so we're interested in a probability measure, mu, okay? And what we're going to do is to sample a Markov chain, okay? So we're going to get some samples theta one to theta capital N. And the key to this is that um, the Markov chain should have as invariant measure, so with invariant measure or distribution, mu, okay? Um, so then this, you know, what will happen is that these guys are, um, you know, is the, the, this case, you know, the distribution will, will tend to this invariant measure and we'll get, um, um, we'll get basically that we can apply the idea to, for instance, you know, I mean, we can apply it to many things, but um, one of them will be, for instance, um, computing expectations and we can write this, right? Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, so that we can introduce this properly, I need some facts um, from markup chains. And so maybe, you know, not all of you have seen them. So let me just introduce some facts in general. Um, so the distribution of a markup chain is determined by two ingredients. Um, so these are See, so determined by um, the initial distribution that we're going to call mu naught, and then also the transition probabilities, right? So how we transition from one state to another in the Markov chain. So, and uh, transition probabilities. And so by this, I mean the following, so I just mean the probability that, you know, for a theta j, it belongs to some uh, set B, given that the, um, the previous, you know, or the state uh, on which it was before in the previous step uh, is T, yeah? And T, of course, belongs to this uh, parameter space and the B is measurable, okay, measurable um, subset of, okay, so maybe do it differently. Um, so what we have is this here measurable. Yeah? So for those who are doing um, probability measure, you know, it's just to keep that in mind. So by Markov property, Um, the latter, so this quantity that we have above the display is not going to depend on uh, the J, yeah? So the latter is independent 
of j and so is determined by a so-called Markov kernel. Okay, and this Markov kernel is, you know, we call it capital K, T dot, okay, and this is um, saying, you know, what we're saying essentially here is that this um, probability that now we say it doesn't depend on J, so we can just take the first one, for instance, um, sorry, zero, yeah. equal T, then this is just simply the K, yeah, K, T, and B. Yeah. Um, so, of course, this is a distribution, yeah, on this, um, for every T fixed. Okay. All right. Um, so, I guess, you know, another definition. So, a PDF A PDF mu um, on you know this parameter space is said to be um, invariant for the kernel or for the you know, just the chain um, if we have that uh, the integral. You know, this integral here, dt, is actually um, mu b, yeah? And this is for all b, again, measurable, yeah? And uh, in the parameter space, so. Okay. Um, okay, um, so, you know, another fact is that from a Gothic theory, What, you know, and this is the important bit, by the way, this is in probability and measure. Um, we have that under some assumptions, so actually mild assumptions, so under some assumptions. The distribution um, of the theta m is going to converge precisely to the invariant measure, yeah? To its unique invariant measure, yeah? Okay, and in particular, what we have is that you know, this average that we were considering as an approximation indeed will be a reasonable approximation because it will converge um, almost surely to the expectation. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And then, um, I mean, of course, on the mean measure. Yeah. Okay. And then, and the further assumptions. So, and under further assumptions, we get a central limit theorem, okay? And it does it, therefore, at rate one over square root of n, yeah? And this is, and, and what is very important is that this is regardless of of the dimension um, of the parameter space, yeah? of dimension m. Yeah? Um, so that's you know really really good because you know we are in high dimensions. We have a method that at least through you know what we can see here, this average will converge you know, at the same speed that you would get otherwise. 
Now, there is a catch, of course. Um, so what I just said is not actually totally true. You know, it is true in terms of the uh, rate, but it's not true in terms of the constant that you have uh, sort of in, in front of the, or accompanying the, the rate, right? So yet the dependencies, right, that, that's going to be the key, you know, the dependencies between adjacent uh, steps in the in the Markov chain, these are going to determine precisely the um, speed at which, you know, well, rather than speed, the um, um, how well well how well the the chain so what it, one says is how well it, it mixes and so how fast it will sort of approach this invariant measure and so um, you know sometimes how good this approximation will yeah. okay so um, as I'm saying yet the dependencies so the dependencies between samples. will affect, let's say, the constant. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so let's introduce then the most sort of well-known um, algorithm that we can have in MCMC. So probably, you know, probably the most well-known Um, sort of general recipe to derive these MCMC methods, or some MCMC methods. Um, you know, it's through so-called um, you know, the metropolis through the following. The metropolis Hastings metropolis Hastings um, MCMC um, algorithm. Yeah. Okay, this I will show them as MH MCMC. Okay. So what is this? Um, so that's so let's let's start, you know, again we have a measure of interest that is mu. So given Then the idea is to have a so-called proposal distribution. So the idea is to introduce a proposal distribution we call Q and that is going to depend on some, you know, on T, on some value. Um, so by the way, this is of course a distribution in the parameter space and it depends, as I'm saying, on some T. So let's say for each T, okay. Um, such that, so it has to satisfy this proposal distribution that um, we can simulate from it Um, or we can, yeah, from it. And also can evaluate the following quantity, which is um, just a ratio of these, so Q and then TS mu t q s t okay uh, and this is for all t and s in the parameter space okay um so then once we have this we can define 
define the Hastings ratio. which is no more than uh, rho, um, rho TS. So we're going to call it, sorry, uh, rho TS. And this is just the minimum of, you know, this quantity here of this ratio. Um, okay, so let's just write it out again. And one, okay. So this is very similar to you know, to this except project, um, ratio, well, not the ratio, but, you know, that we had a, um, we, we were gonna, well, we were simulating a uniform. So here it would be, you know, very similar to simulating a uniform. Okay. And so the algorithm is going to go as follows. Um, so, so define this guy and the algorithm. to generate the mark of chain is as followed. So we have, you know, first of all, we need to choose some initial um, you know, some starting point in the algorithm. So um, choose theta naught, which is going to be theta naught one to, as in this is just, let's say capital M dimensional. And um, now given theta J um, and J in the natural numbers, then we're going to draw a proposal basically from the proposal distribution that now is going to depend on uh, the theta j. Okay, that'll be very nice. Uh, let's say theta j. Okay, and then question now is whether we accept it or we reject it. Yeah, or well, yeah. It's not exactly like the um, acceptance rejection algorithm, but I will talk about that in a sec. Um, so then we have. This is, you know, SJ, so the proposal with probability um, given by this, so the row, um, so the row, you know, going from T to J to SJ, and otherwise we stay where we were with probability one minus, you know, this row, yeah? Okay. So it is different in that the acceptance rejection algorithm, um, well, I mean, to start with, of course, we're not creating any mark of chain in the acceptance rejection algorithm, we're just creating a sample, but I mean, ignoring that, uh, the, the, you know, at the technical level of the, of this step, they are different because the acceptance rejection will carry on sort of trying, um, to accept something until it does. Yeah. While here we'll, we will be satisfied with the previous, uh, sort of, uh, state where the chain was. Yeah. Okay. So let's introduce then some, uh, result that justifies the, um, algorithm, uh, or the use of the algorithm. So suppose that, you know, we have positivity, strict positivity in the mu and also the proposal distribution. Okay. Um, and this is of course for all T. Okay, um, so then mu um, is going to be exactly what we wanted. Yeah? Is the invariant measure of the Markov chain we've constructed above. Yeah? Okay, so that's exactly what we wished to, to have. So how do we prove this? I mean, it's actually not hard to prove this. Um, so proof, okay. Um, let's note, first of all, that we can write, you know, our kernel as follows. So we have that, you know, is equal to some lowercase um, 
some lowercase um, kernels. So this is like a density. Um, I will see now that it's not a density as one would generally talk about densities, which are, you know, for those that know probability to uh, measure, um, we'll know that these are the, you know, we look at densities with respect to Lebesgue, basically, that's what we call densities, but it could be that we have a density with respect to other more general measures, yeah, than Lebesgue. And this is exactly what, what this is, but anyway, if you don't know about probability measure, then just, you know, believe that, um, we don't have to believe that, you know, this capital K can be written simply, and this is obvious, uh, well, not obvious, but nearly. Um, so what we have is that this K is given by, you know, KTS, Q, S, T, and then the row, T, S. Okay, so why is this? Well, um, so the probability of getting, or, you know, of, of getting, yes, of moving to S from T, well, I mean, you first of all need to draw that from the proposal, that option from the proposal, so that it has this probability, and then it has to be accepted, right? So, um, so then we have this probability. And now, what all the option is there? Well, it's just the option of not being accepted, so just staying in T. And so for this, we have one minus, you know, R, um, RT. And let me define that in sec. And the what we say is that we stay in this uh, T uh, state, okay? So this is a Dirac delta, by the way, so this is called the Dirac delta. And so in case there is someone who hasn't seen this, this is a measure, basically, that is going to have what is called the point mass at T. So that essentially means that you have all of your mass at this T and no more than that. So you have you know, zero everywhere else. And so it takes like value infinity if you like, but in such a way that uh, when you integrate it over some you know set B, then you know, any distribution of probability distribution in this case uh, should have measure one. And uh, because all of the mass is exactly at one point, then essentially when you integrate um, over some set, if this set contains the T, then you will get all of the mass directly, and otherwise you will get zero mass. Yeah? So this, this, this explains this indicator. And then the RT is given by all of the, so, so, you know, all of the options here. Yeah? What is QS? T, row T, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So let me make an assumption. Uh, so assume the following, and we're going to prove that uh, later on. So assume that rho T S Q S T, then times mu T is symmetric. So the T and the S, so we can write it as S T Q T S and mu S. Okay. Um, so we will call this star so that we don't forget later on. Show it. Um, Okay, so assume this, then then what we get, well, we get that, excuse me, so what quantity did we want to look at? Actually, let me just write this on the left directly. Um, so remember, we were trying to show, you know, that we have an invariant measure, and so we wish to look at uh, this quantity here, yeah? on the left hand side, and we want to show that this equals this mu b. Okay. All right. So let's write that then. Um, so we write here just the um, k t b times the mu t d t, and let's try to show that this is mu b. Yeah. So what do we do? Well, let's just write out uh, the k first of all. So we have this b, and then we're going to have an integral of the theta, because we're using this uh, lowercase um, k, and so we're gonna have here just the qst rho ts, okay. and then times the mu t. Um, let me just first of all write the ds. So ds and then the mu t 
dt. And then the second term will give us will give us um, the integral over p of the integral over this capital theta and of one minus um, r t, okay, with respect to this Dirac delta, okay, at t, so Dirac delta at t, s, and then the mu t dt, okay. And now what we're going to do is to swap integrals. So we're going to use Tonelli, Tonelli's uh, theorem. Um, or, you know, for Bini, if you like, but it's everything's positive, so then it's just, um, you know, it's nicely, you know, one can nicely argue that you can swap integrals and, um, you know, not only um, swapping integrals, but then the other thing is that this quantity is this quantity sort of reversed here, um, or, well, excuse me, it would be the first one here, and we want to um, introduce that, or let's say plus assumption. Okay, so what we get is the integral, in this case, we're not going to swap things, um, but we will, let me just say, um, so that's going to come for the second integral, yeah? Um, but anyway, because we'll want to essentially integrate this guy with that. Yeah, um, yeah so then, yeah, okay. So, okay, so then, yeah, let's swap this, right? Um, so we have QTS, Rho S T and then um, with mu S, okay, and we're gonna get this DS DT, all right, still plus an indicator function, right? Because this comes from precisely this property that we were uh, talking about there. So this indicator function of T B and B, one minus R T, uh, mu t dt, okay, and then um, and therefore what we're going to get, so, I mean, in this case we have something here that is very particular, um, so um, we're going to get, you know, rs, if we swap integrals again, so this will need um, this uh, tonality, so we get rs mu s, yeah? okay, so then just uh, writing this out again, what we get is this integral of the b of r s plus one minus r s, if you like, um, mu s ds, and so this is just mu of b, right? That's exactly what we wanted to show. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've left uh, one thing to show. So is this star we had in there? Um, so finally. Star will follow from it follows um, follows by the definition of the row. Yeah. Um, so it's it's very immediate. So I will skip some details, but um, you know if we write write out this. And multiply it by the um, you know, the minimum. So we multiply by the inside or, or the arguments, two arguments of the minimum. Um, then what we get is that you know we'll have cancellation of the denominators, and then the other term will also you know, we'll multiply one by this. And so this will be um, you know, the minimum between these two guys. Okay. Okay. And then this is just. You know, by the same sort of exactly the same argument, and this is just the reversed, uh, excuse me, that's a row um, quantity, the symmetric quantity, yeah? which is what we want to, to show. So we'll let you think about that a bit. Okay. Um, okay, so let me then make a remark um, because we've shown this. So we've shown that the Markov chain, you know, will have the right uh, invariant distribution, the sort of mu that we wanted to. But there is something else to it that is actually really, really uh, nice. And it's that, you know, the algorithm really, so, I mean, we, we choose, you know, we have the zero step, so we choose that guy, that's fine. And then we draw from the proposal. And then really when we're using mu, it's only through this R, this, uh, excuse me, uh, row, that is going to have 
so in terms of mu, it will only depend on this ratio. And that means that we don't actually even need to know the distribution that we're sampling from, but rather, you know, we, we can know it up to constants. Yeah? And this is exactly the setting of Bayesian posteriors in which, you know, I remind you that you have the product of the likelihood and the prior, but then we need to normalize that um, so that it integrates to one. And then that normalization constant is generally speaking is, uh, well, it can be very, very hard to compute. It's impossible to compute, basically. Um, and so it can be a pain. And... Um, what we get through MCMC and Metropolis Hastings is um, is that you know we, we we don't need to know that, and so it's very nice for uh, Bayesian computations. Yeah, this uh, I guess. so let me remark that. Um, so a remark it's just that mu features in the algorithm. Only through through this ratio, yeah, that I was talking about with the ratio mu s mu t, and so a key application of this of you know, the MHMCMC is Bayesian posteriors, yeah? or Bayesian computations. You know, drawing from Bayesian posteriors, if you like. Okay. So, as you can imagine, the art of, um, you know, the art of Metropolis Hastings MCMC is in you know, is choosing the proposal distribution. Okay. So we'll uh, see two examples of this, two important examples of, of, the, of you know, choices of Q uh, in the next lecture. And so today we're going to leave it um, here. So I hope you enjoyed um, this lecture and I will see you again in the next one.